Okay? Not yet though, but you already saw it. <laughs> okay, according to today's word of God, Bible describes our life as what? A race. It's a race. Okay, race. Our life is like a race. By the way, who has the world record for men's 100 meter? Who's this guy? How do you know? You, you, you just know, right? Usain Bolt from where? Jamaica. Jamaica, right? And what what is the record? 9.58 seconds. At the 2009 World, World Championship in Athletics in Germany, I, I mean the, uh, Berlin, Germany. He made it. Let's look at the video clip, okay? He's running, you know, to take a good picture, okay? Okay, so again, okay, that, that was a world like record in 2009. Uh, still, he's the fast, fastest guy for the 100 meter man. Yeah, he is. He is, okay? Again, the Bible says, our life is like what? Race. I would like to say, uh, it's not like 100 meters, but it is like a marathon. long marathon in our faith, right? So, you know, on top of it, Bible says, it is, uh, it is marked out for us, okay? And that means you are already in the race, okay? Regardless, you, you know it or not, you know? Okay? It is a spiritual law. In other words, you, you believe it or not, you already in the race. race. Okay? So you have been in the race since your birthday. Okay? <laughs> you are in the world and you are in the race. Like, you know, he did. You know, just you saw, saw it. So the word of God given to you, not somebody else. You know, you, you may think, ah, this word is somebody else. You know, my friend should have heard it. No, it is to you today. God is telling you right now. Amen? Amen. So, as we read the first word of the Hebrew chapter 12, we read Hebrew chapter 12, it, it starts with the word, therefore. Therefore means that chapter 12 is summarizing the consequences of the content of Hebrew chapter 11. Okay? Hebrew chapter 11, by, by the way, it is known as what, what kind of chapter is it? Faith. In the parent parenthesis. Faith. Faith. Chapter of faith. faith. Okay, chapter of faith. So, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 introduces us the heroes, heroes of the faith from the Old Testament by saying, by faith, Abel did something, by, by faith, and of by faith, Noah, by faith, Abraham did this, this, this and that, and so on, okay? So in chapter 12, it starts with the word, therefore. That means God wants us to be another hero of faith, like in Hebrew chapter 11. Amen? Amen. So God wants you to be hero of faith, okay? The winner of the faith. So to be the winner of faith, we need to know what faith is. What is faith then? Let me ask you, what is faith? Next slide, okay? It, let's read Romans 1.17. The, the righteous will live by faith. This is what Paul said, and it means faith can give us Life and righteousness. righteousness, okay, before God. So, this could be the start of faith. The life of faith becomes very specific in Corinthians 2.20, okay? Corinthians 2.20, uh, let's read it all together. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? This is the summit of the faith of life. Okay? What kind of status is it? 
This is Jesus' driven life is the summit of faith. Amen. Let's say it all together. Jesus', Jesus driven, driven life is the, the summit, summit of, of faith. faith. Amen. Okay? Jesus' driven life is the summit. But it will be ended up with like this. Jesus said in Luke 18.8. Let's read it all together. However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? Jesus is trying to find people of faith when He comes back. Okay? So, could He find? Yes, but very little. Okay? Extremely small number of people He could find at that time when He comes back. That's why Jesus said it is a narrow gate in Matthew 7.13. Okay? It is a narrow path. It is a narrow gate to get in. Okay? So, at the start of the Hebrews chapter 12, God is urging us to be a hero of faith. And you just got to know what is faith, right? What is the faith? What is faith? Faith gives life and righteousness, and Jesus' driven life is the summit, okay? You take Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you follow the way Jesus did. And, but remember that it's kind of hard to keep the faith as, as time goes by, okay? So, as I told you, the, we already, you know, are uh, in the trap of race. What is the first thing that we need to know? The first thing that we need to recognize in the race is what? The goal line, right? Next slide, goal line. Okay, that is the, you know, all the runners are aiming, aiming to, right? And this is the most important thing that we also need to know, know uh, when we get in get in the you know, race of life. What is your goal? Okay? It is the most important thing. Let's imagine that uh, you all become an age of 80. Okay? Let's imagine. Yeah, you, you, you may think uh, the time won't, will not come like that though. But if you become an age of 80, you try your best for your life, right? Whenever you choose, you try to choose the best thing for yourself, right? But you realize that your goal of your life was wrong. Mm -hmm. Then your life becomes in vain, right? So, because you guys are all young, you know, and you have some time, I guess, then what would be the true goal of our lives? That's my question, okay? So, what is it? It is Jesus, okay? In other words, the true goal of our life should be the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? It's written in there on the first line. Okay? Judge, what is it? Judgment seat of the Christ, which is reward judgment according to your deeds. Okay? So at the end of the Paul's life, he said that 2 Timothy chapter 4 7, let's read it together. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. He's, he's saying he finished the race. He already knew our life is race. Let's keep going. I have kept the faith. Now there is a store for me, store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only, not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Okay, this is very clear. He said he finished his race and he kept his faith. I mean, I mean uh, his race and he kept faith, right? And he got what? He, he knew that he's going to get the crown of righteousness before Jesus Christ, right? So Paul said that he will get the crown of the righteousness, which is a reward from Jesus. So I, I told you, we have be worse, okay, according, according to your deeds. And in Philippians 3.14, Paul also said, let's read it, 
I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenly word in Christ Jesus. He again said, you know, he 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 know his goal and he he has got prize, right? In this verse, okay. And the author of Hebrews said, let's read eleven six. And without, and without, without faith, faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. God rewards those who earnest, earnestly seek Him. Okay? So, we have to remember that there will be rewards from God. Okay? Even for a small little thing, you you uh, pray today or play you know instruments, small thing to Jesus or church. Body of you know the body of Jesus Christ is church, right? So there will be reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, so this should be our goal of race. Amen. 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 Another aspect of race is that you should keep going forward, okay? Next slide, okay? okay. In 100 meter race, if you are late or if you do not move after the gunshot, bang, then everybody runs. You stay still, then you lose, right? Okay, in a race, it is, you know, the same for our race of faith. If you do not do anything, you are getting behind of everybody, okay? So we, because all, you know, we all have our original sins and sins from our ancestors and my own sins. If you are not moving forward, it means your faith is slowly sinking down, okay? In a swamp. Since it is, a, you know, this world belongs to, belong to Satan and we need to keep moving forward Otherwise, faith will drift away. We Christians, okay? We Christians are like fish or salmon which goes against the stream to have blessed lives, okay? Look at that. You know, those fishes are swimming against the stream, stream of the, you know, the water. And if you stay there and do nothing, click, you become like this. Okay, so without knowing it, you get into that, that kind of situation, okay? So to have a blessed life, you must block the sources of curses and swimming against the stream, stream of the world, okay? So if you are just staying where you are, then it could be like this, you know, the, the dead fishes like this. So please keep moving forward to win the race. Amen? Amen? Keep moving forward. Okay, that's the important thing. Okay, according to today's words, uh, there are three stages of race. Okay? There are three stages of race. As I told you before, Hebrew chapter 12 starts with the word therefore. It summarizes chapter 11. And it also means that now it is your time. Okay? Therefore, it is your time to win the race, okay? And our first situation is like this. There are, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, witness, okay? And the cloud, great cloud means the guidance of God. You, do you remember the, the, when Israelites were in the, in the wilderness? They... Do you remember the, the pillar of cloud guided them during the day, right? And making the shadow, a uh, cool shadow in the desert. So God guided them. The same thing, you know, the great cloud of witness, the heroes of the faith, is they are my, my guys, okay? And my models of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, there are many heroes 
and they are my guides and models. So please remember that we have we Christians are not we are not alone. Okay, when you have a hard time, we are not alone. We you have you know senior pastor and Yunji Sanseng님, Hyunjung Sanseng님, and other you know church members that you can share your prayer concerns and ask for help or guidance sometimes. So those people will help you to be the hero of faith. Amen? So we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness and models that we can count on and they, that they can help us to go to the right track of the faith. So the first stage is that we, we have heroes of faith and we can run from them at first, okay? So if you do not know where to go and if you do not know what to do and you can refer to the heroes of Bible in, in, from the Bible and also you can ask senior pastor and Yunji Sanseng-nim and you can talk to, you know, those you think they have, you know, I mean, deeper faith than you have. Okay? So you can ask them. So next stage is written in Hebrews in the later part of the verse 1. Uh, let's read. Okay? The, the second bullet. Okay? Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sins that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Okay. So here there is you know, three things that we, we, we need to do. I believe that some of you are already in this stage. What are the three things in at the second stage of you know race? Please repeat with me. Throw off everything that hinders, okay, around you, bothers you to grow in faith, okay. And the second one is throw off the sins that so easily entangles. Some, you know, simple things are entangle you to, you know, that you, you cannot go forward, you know. Okay, so you, you got to cut them out, okay. The third thing is, run, run with perseverance. You need patience. Okay, when you run the, you know, when you are in a marathon, you know, a game, then you have to finish it, right? If you uh, give up in the middle, that, that's nothing, right? So, when you are in, in that kind of long race, you are going to wear, are you gonna, what are you going to wear? In a, in a cold day, are you going to wear a thick jacket? No, right? You are going to wear a thin t-shirt and shorts, even though it is kind of cold outside, right? Because when you are running, you know that it's going to be hot, right? So you, you don't need any thick jacket. You have to take off. That means throw off everything that hinders you, okay? So you may wear, you know, in a, when you are not running, not in the race, but for us, we are already in the race. You don't need it, okay? You need to cut out uh, some unnecessary stuff in your life that bothers your, you know, growth in faith. Cut it out. You already know that. Amen? You already know that. What to cut, okay? Think about, you know, whatever you are doing in, in, in your 24 hours per day, and if you think, ah, this is not necessary, you need to cut that out, okay? So, you need to uh, wear short pants and t-shirts when you are running, okay? And, to win the race, you need to take off everything that hinders your race. So, what does it mean, you know, our faith? After accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, we have our inner being, right? You have heard of inner beings and outer beings, right? So, how is the relationship between inner beings and outer beings? They fight, always fight. They are enemies to each other, okay? And then, their relationship is, is not that good, okay? They are enemies. They fight each other all the time. So, what it means is the desires of outer being or our desires of our flesh, that those are the, 
those are the factor of hindering the growth of your inner being. So you need to cut that out. Okay? As a result, the desires of outer being needs to be thrown off. Amen? The next slide. Okay, Paul said that. Philippians 3 a. Let's read it all together. What is, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of the knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish that I may, that I may gain what? Christ. Okay? That makes sense now, right? Paul, Paul you know, said everything is rubbish, okay? That father's uh, knowing Jesus or to gain my Christ, okay? So the next thing is we need to throw away that the sins easily entangles. There must be, you know, uh, individual differences. In my case, my own weakness is, what do you think? What is my weakness? Isaac, you know your daddy, right? What is my weakness? My weakness is money. money. <laughs> My weakness, okay. I give you an example. Okay, I hate wasting money. You know, some kind of unnecessary spender. Yeah, I might mean, spend, right? Sometimes I overreact uh, to the grocery items that I think uh, that <laughs> these are not not you know necessary. Okay, <laughs> okay. So especially when I when we prepare lunch for the uh, church, my wife, you know, Jihan, Jihan Jisalim, uh, she always buys too much, too much for the, you know, considering, considering the number of members. Uh, this is, honey, this is too much of meat, okay? <laughs> okay? When I make that kind of comments and the amount of meat is too much, then there will be some guests. Or the that Sunday, the food is not enough. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> then then I get complaints from my wife. I told you, why did you stop me to buy more or something like that? And I also, you know, sometimes I get mad, you know, saying that I was just trying to save my my money. Okay, <laughs> my spend. One day when I was praying to God. You know, Jesus pointed out that it was not that I was, you know, trying to save my money, but, but I just, you know, do not love Jesus, okay? Or a church, the body of Jesus. So, I, I repented at that time, but it comes up, you know, it comes up whenever I go to a grocery store with <laughs> You know, together with her anyway, then I recall that, you know, situation and responses from Jesus Christ. Okay, so these days I'm trying not to make any comments when we are, especially at the grocery stores, especially for the lunch press preparation for the church, okay? So I'm trying. Satan attacks us with our, you know, weakest point. Okay, very customized attacks to you, okay? Okay, your weak, Satan knows your weak points. Satan, Satan bothers you with that small gap. So you know that already, right? For these weak points, we have to fight until you bleed to win the attacks. Okay, if you are not winning these attacks. Why is it? Why is it? Why? Why? Why are you keep losing? Because it, you know. Let's read verse four. In your in your struggle against sin, sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood until you die. You have to fight against until you shed your blood. It means that this is a very serious problem in your life. If you have, if you have, you know, have a definite behaviors of sins, and you want to stop it, and still you are doing it, then you have to 
fight against until you shed blood. That means you didn't try your best yet. Okay? Okay? So, if you still cannot win the behavior, behavior of sins, then what do you need to do? You ask for help. Come to, you know, senior pastor and then, you know, ask for prayer. And she's going to let you know what to do and direction. Okay? Or ask, just ask 전도사님 or 윤지 선생님, 현정 선생님, they, that they, they can help you. And they will pray for you. Then you will get over 100%. I can guarantee it. Okay? The important thing is you need to, we need to, you know, fight against, struggle against the sins and we can win over the sins. Amen? Amen. We can win. Okay? Amen. So what would be, what would you do if you recently lose from, an, you know, a, a text from Satan? Please do not be discouraged or frustrated. To win the race, we need to run with perseverance. Amen. Okay, and remember, there will be an ending point of our race. Okay, so don't be discouraged because we, we there will be an ending point of our race. Okay, so the third stage. Next slide. The third stage is that we need to know that this race is a steeple chase. What is steeple chase? This one is steeple chase. Okay, the race includes barriers and water jumps. Okay, so it's not simple just running. It's got you know some obstacles that you have to jump over. Okay, we need to see it you know spiritually, and God made our race like this. Those guys you know uh, jumping into the you know the, the water jumps and. What kind of obstacle we have? You know, sometimes we have scoldings and punishments or, you know, whipping from God. And finally, we have our own cross. God allows us our own cross in our lives. All the, these things are laid out and hidden at the corners of our lives. Okay? Those who, who doesn't have any problem in your life. Raise your hand. See, everyone has it. Okay? So we need to know that there could be some, you know, problems in your lives and we need to get them over in the race. We have to get them over, jump over. Okay? So, do you remember that all the Israelites who went into the wilderness and when they escaped, you know, they all went into the wilderness. The wilderness means, you know, it's not an easy life to get through, right? Nobody jumped from Egypt to Canaan. They had times for, you know, times in the wilderness. wilderness. So, okay? So before we reach the land of honey and milk, we have to go through the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when we are in the race, we need to remember that God is watching us all the time. God is like our parents. Even though God's, God sets up you know, the race, but He is always watching us and encouraging us along with the heroes of faith in heaven. Amen. Our uh, other saints and, and our Father God is watching us and they are encouraging us. That's why we need to fix our eyes to Jesus Christ. When we face the hard time in our lives, let's read, you know, verse 10. Our, our Father disciplines us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in His holiness. This is exactly what happened to Jesus? Jesus died on the cross, but he rose after three days 
by defeating the power of death as a as a as the first fruit. Okay. So Jesus showed us an example with his own ex experience, and he's inviting us to the way he he went. Amen. 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 Okay. Next slide. Your favorite slide. Okay. <laughs> So today I talked about, about faith, right? What is the faith? Faith provides life and righteousness, and Jesus driven life is the summit. And a few people will make it because it's a narrow door. As time goes by, people will you know go away from the right track of the faith. Okay? So but I believe our giant church in uh, on, right on the track. Amen? So please, please hang in here, okay? Don't go somewhere else and you will lose your track, okay? <laughs> okay, our life is like a race, okay? True goal of our life is what? The ju judgment seat of Christ. So for that, we in this race, we need to keep moving. If you, are, if you think you are staying there, now it's time to move. Okay? And there are three stages of race. We remember that we have a great cloud of witness, which is you know guidance of God, and we also have models of faith. And you to win the race, you need to throw off everything that bothers you to grow in faith and the sins that so easily entangles. Okay? And you need to run with perseverance, okay? And our race is a steeple chase. You know, there are some hidden barriers or obstacles that you need to jump over, okay? So for that, you need to fix your eyes to Jesus and remember that God is our Father. That they are, you know, Father and witnesses. They are watching us, encouraging us all the time. Amen. Amen. This is word of God.